Hello, I'm Dr Sarah Pugh and today we're going to be talking about thyroid and thyroid hormones. But in previous videos I've been talking about hormone hierarchies and how certain hormones have power over others and a lot of people do have thyroid hormone issues and the thyroid because it's very close to the surface is quite susceptible to effects of light which I'll come into but also we're only at the 101 series as in I'm going to keep it quite basic for people in this video so let's begin and have a look at the hormone hierarchy and the thyroid hormone. So here we have a very simplified hormone hierarchy and it's just to demonstrate that certain hormones have power over others and some of them are high up like leptin it is has a lot of power over other hormones and obviously this is far more complicated in reality than I've made it here but fundamentally when people want to get health information they just need to know the basics about how something works because they just want to know well what can I do to make myself more healthy what can I do for my thyroid why have I got a problem and what we can take home from here is that cortisol does have an influence over the thyroid which is the fact that when you have too much cortisol that's going to affect your thyroid hormone and when you don't have enough cortisol that's going to affect your thyroid hormones as well so you basically need the goldilocks amount of cortisol but it's not the only thing that influences thyroid it's one of many so let's dive into thyroid a little bit more even if you can't see this picture because you're just listening what it's going to explain to you is where does thyroid come from so it gets made originally from tyrosine which is an amino acid and iodine and then it gets made first of all into thyroxine or t4 which i call it like a coffee bean because it's not active and then it can get converted into t3 which is active and this is the one which basically runs our metabolism and i just call it the ground coffee and then there's something else called reverse T3, which is not active. And it's like when I lock my coffee in a jar, if I'm giving up caffeine or something. So reverse T3 is inactive T3. So we've basically only got one major active thyroid hormone. I have seen people selling supplements for something called T2. Uh, and I've got no idea about the research or whether it works or not. So I'll look into that another time. So for now, what what we basically uh, want to know is, are we making enough thyroxine? Have we got enough active uh, T3 to run the metabolism? And are we making sure our bodies are not inactivating our reverse T3? Because having lots of T3 and then your body just deciding, oh no, I'm going to change it all into reverse T3 is going to cause metabolic problems as well. So... 20% of the thyroxine or T4 or the coffee bean gets converted into active T3 in the gut. So if you've got gut issues like SIBO or leaky gut or something like that, this could be stealing, say, one fifth of your active uh, T3 or active thyroid hormone. The next thing is to do with sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone because too much estrogen and not enough progesterone can affect uh, levels of T3 but also we need progesterone for thyroid uh, receptor sensitivity as well. So again hormones are often all tied in with each other so as we would say estrogen dominance would be something that's going to affect your thyroid function and this can be from lots of different reasons and we'll cover that when we do estrogen in the hormone series. And then dietary reasons could be not enough iodine, not enough zinc, not enough selenium and not enough vitamin A. Uh, and these are things which you can address by looking at what kind of way of eating that you're following. Because in a meat based way of eating, there's plenty of zinc, plenty of vitamin A. Generally, with, with this, people are quite savvy with um, nutrition these days when it comes to supplements. It's usually something else which is driving the, the thyroid problem. And again, I haven't covered everything because these are meant to be short videos. Just bear in mind that this is a really oversimplified example of a hormone hierarchy. And it's way, way, way more complicated than this. But sometimes when we overcomplicate things, it then becomes impossible to make daily life changes. And fundamentally, that's all that people want is, well, what can I do in my daily life to help my hormones or my health or my body? In addition to what I've said in this slide, another really important part of thyroid health is to do with light. So first of all, it's about getting UVA light in the morning because that's what triggers the production of your thyroid hormone from tyrosine. So it's not just about taking medication, it's about your body being able to make it naturally. And your body does know the difference between hormones you've made yourself because they're light stamped versus those that you take as a supplement or as a hormone replacement. But like I said, I never have any issues with people 
using supplements or hormone replacements when there's no other option. So that would be the first light tip would be to make sure you get the UVA and that's in the morning and it does vary from season to season, but it's after sunrise and it's going to be before noon, that kind of window. And secondly, it would be using, say, red light on your thyroid, one of those small mini panels made by a decent company, say, a Bomb Charge or EMR Tech. But also the other thing that you can do, and I'm not doing this right now, would be to wear a scarf or something to cover your thyroid gland when you're working at the computer, especially if you don't have a blue light filter on or you've already got a problem with your thyroid and you want to add another layer of protection. Thanks for watching. I'll be making some more videos about the other hormones in the hierarchy, so feel free to comment.